Hello, my name's Bob Chorley, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of the main features of Baselight for Avid. Baselight for Avid is one of a range of Baselight editions which bring our powerful grading and finishing tools right into your editing system. The Avid Baselight edition currently runs in Media Composer and Symphony version 6 or higher running on a Mac. Once you've installed the software and activated the license, Baselight will be available as an effects filter in the Filmlight bin in the effects palette. To add Baselight to clips in your timeline, you simply drag the effect from the palette onto the clips. This sequence has already been graded. As you can see, the Baselight effect is applied to each clip in the timeline. The green dot in the corner of the icon shows that Baselight is a real-time effect and is applied in real time as the sequence plays back. In fact, we use GPU acceleration to get the best performance. So let's take a look at the Baselight user interface and see how grades and other effects are applied. I'm going to take this clip here as an example. I go into effect mode and then click on the Baselight icon up here. As you can see, the Baselight user interface has opened up into its own window. While the plugin interface is open, none of the main AVID controls underneath do anything. So we may as well open up the Baselight UI to full screen by clicking on the plus button here. The Baselight user interface consists of three main panels. On the left hand side we've got all the parameters, the controls for the parameters. On the right hand side we've got the image display and below that the histogram. You can change the size of any of the panels by clicking and dragging on these splitter bars and you can see that as the panel scales the text on all the buttons also scales so even when the panel is fairly small you can still clearly read what it says on the buttons. If you have an external monitor connected it will display the same image as you see here in the user interface. This is a good way to work as it allows you to use a high quality grading display which can be calibrated to a specific reference standard. The histogram shows the relative RGB content of the image. Darker colours are to the left hand side and lighter shades are to the right. Clicking anywhere in the image brings up a pixel display and also shows the corresponding RGB values in the histogram. At the top of the screen is the main base light menu which allows you access to most of the functions as well as help and this is also where you access the preference settings for base light. Below the parameters panel is the navigation bar. This allows us to scrub through the current clip. It's often important to check that keys and other effects work properly throughout the shot. The navigation bar also indicates the position of keyframes when we add animation to parameters. I'll be covering dynamic effects and keyframing in another tutorial. In Baselight, grades and effects are applied in layers. The Layer Manager button shows us all the layers that are contributing to the current look. We call this a grade stack. The layers are processed from the top downwards. The dot indicates the currently selected layer, and layers which are shown in red are currently bypassed and therefore not contributing to the output. The top layer, which is layer 0, is the input image. This is what's being fed into the plugin from the Avid timeline. In this sequence, the material is native log C footage from an ARRI Alexa, so it looks very flat when viewed in its raw form. The first layer in our stack is applying a curve to convert from log C to video. If our footage had already been converted, then we wouldn't need to do this, but keeping the input in its native form can give us greater freedom when grading. Each layer in our stack can be given a name so that uh, we can remember what we're actually doing with the layer. To add a new layer, first choose the point in the stack where you want to add the layer and then click on the plus button in the layer manager. In this example you can see we now have layer 18 added to the bottom of the stack. 
Alternatively, you can just press P on the keyboard. And now you can see we've got layer 19 added as well. Baselight provides a lot of keyboard shortcuts to really speed up your workflow. I'll cover some of them in this tutorial, and you can find the complete list in the Baselight for Avid user guide. Note that by default, the function keys on the Mac keyboard are assigned to specific system functions, so you'll need to disable or remap these before you start using Baselight for Avid. Details of how to do this are covered in the installation tutorial as well as the user guide. Once we've added a new layer, we can choose a grade or effect operator to apply to the image. This row of buttons here is used to select the different operators. By default, this new layer has the video grade selected, but we can choose a different type of grade by clicking on it in this column. When you select an operator, its controls appear in the parameter panel here on the left, and you can adjust them simply by dragging any of the sliders or other controls on the screen. Controls which have RGB values can either be shown as RGB sliders, which can be ganged, or moved separately by clicking on these ganging buttons here. Or you can click on this button to convert them into a hue wheel and master version of the same control. All of these controls are also mapped onto the artist color control surface, which makes grading a lot easier. I'll cover the artist color in a separate tutorial. Some of the operators have a lot of controls and things can get a bit cramped if you've got a fairly small panel on the left. So these operator selector buttons can be hidden either by clicking on this triangle or by pressing L on the keyboard. Some of the grades can also have this lower section increased in size if you click on the customize button and go to bottom section scale factor and increase it to 100%. It's now easier to see these buttons down at the bottom here. Some operators also have too many parameters to assign each one to a separate slider on the UI or a separate control on the artist color. For example, the film grade has nine adjustable parameters. To allow access to all the parameters and keep things as flexible as possible, each parameter can be mapped onto any of the controls. These mappings are selected using the tabs at the top of the parameters panel. On the first tab, we have exposure, contrast and saturation mapped onto the three main controls and on the second tab we now have shadows, midtones and highlights. Exposure, contrast and saturation have been moved down here. These are controlled by the knobs on the artist color. Additional tabs can also be added by clicking on the add page button and then each of the individual controls can be assigned to a different parameter using the drop down lists here. So for example we now have exposure, midtones and highlights on this panel. To reset any individual parameter back to its default value, you can click on these R buttons in the UI or press the corresponding reset button on the artist color. If you want to reset the whole operator, then you can either press Command Delete on the keyboard or go back to the operator list, right click on the current operator and select Reset Operator Entry. Notice that his name has turned back from blue to white, indicating that this operator is no longer having any effect on the output. This column gives access to five different types of grade operator, which allow you to adjust the colour and look of the image in different ways. These are covered in detail in the Baselight manuals and other tutorials. There are also other grading operators available, as well as effects and special filters such as blur, soften and sharpen. To access these additional operators, right click on one of the operators already in this list and select change operator type. You can now choose one of the operators from this list. You can also add additional rows to the bottom of the list and then add operators into those. Within a single layer, we can apply more than one operator. For example, in this layer, we could use a film grade to adjust maybe the saturation, followed by a video grade which we could use to maybe adjust the gamma and the overall gain of the image, and then maybe we could follow that with a sharpen. If I want to I can go back and 
adjust the hue shift here to really change things around a bit. And just like the layers in a stack, the operators in a layer are applied from the top downwards. Now we've done quite a lot to the image in this layer, and if we're not happy with it, we may want to just reset the entire layer. And the simplest way to do that is to remove the layer and then add it back in again. We can either do that by opening up the layer manager and clicking on the minus button, or we can press shift P on the keyboard and then P again to add the layer back in. One thing you'll notice though is that the list of operators has reset back to the original five operators. If we wanted to retain the operators in the layer, we'd need to go to the Customize button and then click on Save as Layer 19's Custom Config to remember the operators that we have in this layer. OK, so far I've shown you how to add base light to a clip in your timeline and then add a new layer to adjust the overall look of the image using grades and other effects. In part 2 of this tutorial, I will show you how to use secondary grades in Baselight to restrict the effects of a layer to specific parts of the image.